Like a rite of passage, the scientific poster is a common communications adventure that all scientists experience. Keep watching to learn how to make a poster that really works. I'm Dr. Kiki Sanford, and we're going to talk poster design basics. A well-designed scientific poster is going to not only summarize your research, but also get the attention of people walking past. Why is it crucial to create an attention-getting poster? First, scientific posters are the most common conference communications currency. They can lead to personal interactions, which can potentially lead to collaborations and professional opportunities. Second, not everyone gets to give talks, but almost everyone will have a poster opportunity. Finally, posters live on after the conference. People now post digital versions on websites, and we are all familiar with poster-filled academic hallways and labs. They are obviously worth taking seriously, but where do you start? Begin by setting boundaries. Step one, know your spatial limits. This will determine how much information and where you place it within your poster. Is your space more horizontal or vertical? Is it big or small? Set the dimensions of the poster before doing anything else. Step two, know your audience. This sets the tone for the design of your poster. Who are you designing for? Children, a broad scientific conference, or a very targeted audience of your scientific peers? Defining your audience will help you design an appropriate poster. Step three, know how to advertise. Advertisements work for a reason, and you can use advertising design principles to your favor. First, limit your words to create more concise language and flow throughout the poster. Second, use lots of images and display your data as simply as possible. If you can say something with a picture or a simple graph, you should. Third, select a few complementary colors and fonts that work together to guide the viewer's eye where you want it to go. Step four, know how to get to the point. Think of your poster as an illustrated abstract. Define your sections, title, abstract, hypothesis, methods, results, conclusions, before you start filling the space with words. Write your text and then cut, cut, and cut again. Anything that is not essential to getting your point across is unnecessary and wastes space. Finally, lay it out for easy reading. People are used to reading from top left to bottom right, so do what people are used to. Okay, now that we have some design basics out there, how are you to do all this? Well, modern technology makes things a lot easier than they used to be, and there are many software programs that are conducive to poster design and layout. Some examples are Adobe Photoshop, Illustrator, PowerPoint, or Corel Draw. Additionally, there are now websites that specifically focus on helping scientists produce posters. If you are a more tactile type of person, draw your layout out by hand before jumping to software. Also, consider printing out the various sections to see what they will look like from far away before you finalize your design. Now, let's talk about how you actually start designing specific aspects of your poster. Point number one is to keep it simple. You don't need to fill every inch of white space with content. Let the space around the stuff guide the viewer's eye. Remember, you want to get people reading from left to right and top to bottom. One way to do this is to align text to the left. Don't center justify. Be nice to the viewer's eyes and use dark type on a light background. This really is the best choice for paper posters. Number two is to be consistent. Stick to only one or two fonts and only one or two colors. Mixing it up with lots of different fonts or colors gets messy and hard on the eye fast. If you really want color variation, use different hues instead of different colors. Print your poster in black and white to see how hues work better than colors. For your fonts, select from sans serif types and use serif only if necessary. Sans serif are typically easier to read from a distance and on that point, don't go smaller than 24 point. All your headings and blocks of text should be consistent in size so that viewers can navigate through your layout intuitively. Similarly, all poster sections should be the same style. Point number three is the layout itself. How do you get a viewer's attention? With a big title. 
As you title your poster and decide how much space to allocate to it, take inspiration from newspaper headlines. You can also use a focal point. Do you have some aspect of your work or of the poster itself that you want viewers to focus on? Design around it to make it the focus. The easiest design standard to apply is the two or three column design. These are standard in poster sessions around the world and do a great job of presenting one's work. After the title, conclusions come first. This might seem counterintuitive, but consider placing your conclusions near the title in the upper left for the biggest impact. If viewers are able to get the key points of your work without much work themselves, they might just stick around for a bit. But remember to make the conclusions brief. Bullet points work well to keep you focused and concise. And finally, don't forget to save some space for your co-authors, affiliations with other institutions, acknowledgements to people who went above and beyond to help you get the work done, your contact information, and funding sources. Co-authors and their affiliations can be placed in a smaller font beneath the title. If it makes sense, use logos instead of lots of words. As images, they convey a lot of information in a way that makes sense to the human brain. If there really is not enough room for your own contact information, can you supply business cards? Tacking a small envelope filled with cards to your poster space can relieve you of a little bit of design stress. Once you have finished putting it all together, it's time to check it over. And the first thing I want you to do is walk away. How does it look from a distance? Is anything difficult to make out or does anything just plain look weird? Also, how does it look after a day away? Mental distance can sometimes help you catch those errors that you would have otherwise missed. You should also give it away. What do other people think? Is there anything that they really like in your design? Or does some criticism keep popping up again and again? Like taking a day away, other eyes can help you catch errors you would have otherwise missed. So ask friends and colleagues, what's it missing? Does it have all the required labels, axes, scale bars, descriptions, pizzazz? Is there a way that you can let viewers take it away? Make printed versions of the finalized posters that interested viewers can take with them. Make sure those pieces of paper have your contact information on them somewhere. Also, is there a way that you can incorporate QR codes that lead to web versions of your poster? What are the main points you should take away with you? Think about your audience. Make it easy for them to understand and engage with your work. Be visual. Use images instead of words. Be concise. Remember, less is more in posters. And be selective about what you put into your poster. Finally, know your limits, know your details, and know your story. Because a good poster is the starting point for an even better conversation.